<laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in the armpit of the San Gabriel Valley. That guy out there is oh, Rick Levy at the end of the San Pasquale Valley. <laughs> He's at the end. He's at the end of my rope. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> We, we was not, that another horse reference, Mike? No, almost. Uh, here, let me take the reins of this podcast. Uh, oh, you're just chomping uh, at the bit, aren't you? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are having a great time tasting and dissecting Cabal tequila. And every one of these, uh, just the, the Blanco, we flipped over it. The Reposado had so much character and, and layers of complexity, I, I can't tell you. This is the Añejo um, uh, expression. Uh as you can see, it's it's they have the logo there uh, on in, uh, stamped onto the uh, onto the the knob here. The my only caution to you folks is when you do get a bottle of this, be careful. Um, it does have a very short pouring spout, so there is a danger of spilling it because they they and it's they, topped off too. Yeah, it's it's well, like it's a it's a gorgeous bottle though. It's so yes. worth it. It's so worth it. So just oh, the only caution. All right, now I'm going to use my Glencairn. We're going to pour some and then give you all the ins and outs on this tequila later. Be careful. Like I said, don't spill it on your computer keyboard because we have no... I'm sticking with the Stossel Harito for tequila. I, I, figured, I figured I'd break out the, the Glencairn just because. Just, just um, if you follow Cabal on, on their Instagram, they're very much... Um, um, uh, they're projecting an image of Jim... J- Gentilism? Gentilism? Gentility? Gentility, yes, thank you. I don't use that word very often because because uh, I can't pronounce it. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it, it's all about, you know, doing your best, perfection, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in every quality, you know, whether it's uh, horseback riding or agave growing or making tequila or projecting a certain image. Um, they they really are are, are top notch, and um, I guess Rick found out this is a limited editions. Uh, you know, it's all coming from from uh, um, Campo. What did they say? Campo Cabal. Campo Cabal is, uh, I believe, where they're saying they uh, grow their agaves. Okay, so. Uh, uh, single estate, I suppose, and the estate is just, you know, as big as the camp can be. Uh, there's lots of words for campo, you know, for estate. There's campo, there's huerta, there's, uh, um, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, I think there's like three different words people like to use. Rancho is another one. Um, again, beautiful lakes and tears. This is more of a deeper gold color. Yeah, eighteen months in American oak, American white oak. Rick's making a request there to uh, Everardo Gonzalez and the the guys at Cabal, the owners. We want to know more about your barrels, because uh, we're we're certainly enjoying. Them. Oh my God, those legs and tears are just gorgeous. Really they're handy. they're not super clingy. They're not super. It's just very natural looking. Okay. Beautiful sp- string of pearls. The color is gorgeous. Um, the, I found I found the reposado had a lot of character, very rich. You know, whereas the blanco was creamy. I think the 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 uh, the reposado I, I thought was quite rich in in the on the palate. Had more of a finish than the blanco did. Blanco had almost virtually no finish, um, and that's okay too. It's all right. Oh wow, that's interesting. <laughs> As the nose is going to the glass. Yes. You know, it's funny. I, the last time I, I I got that first whiff, um, Jim and I, uh, um, Jim, our, our taster in Ohio, we did the uh, we tasted uh, last year the the special edition of uh, uh, illegal. Or it's actually Dewar's Scotch in illegal barrels, which was really a, a, a. If you haven't seen that one, you should watch that because it was an experience. Because I have very limited knowledge in Scotch, whereas 
uh, uh, Jim, you know, has a, a full palate knowledge of that. I got like a scotchy nose on it, like right off the bat. It reminded me of of Doers or even Glen Finch, which is one that I, I'm familiar with. Kind of a sweet hay almost, or sage, or you know, that's what we called it. That's what that's what Jim led me to, to that you know that that aroma, which comes from the barrel, I'd imagine. Yeah, the aroma is not jumping out of the glass like you know with a blanco, it just really jumped out of the glass yeah. at you. With the uh, reposado, it was um, you know a little bit more tame, but you know there was a lot of presence there, and uh, now. You know, I'm having to dig a little bit more, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's definitely more wood forward. Maybe it hasn't opened up yet. Uh, you know, I, there are a lot of different variables when, when it comes to, when it comes to a tequila this well made. I mean, so far I've enjoyed the Blanco and the Reposado, so, um, more wood notes, it's a bit sweeter. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like the uh, um, the reposado or wood notes are amped up a little bit. Yeah, because I'm not getting toast. I'm not getting agave. A little toastier, maybe slightly more butterscotch. <sighs> Definitely more barrel more caramel. I don't know what would you say. Uh, I would go more honey. Oh. More honey. Right. Honey on the nose, okay? Not not on the sweetener. We haven't had, I haven't ingested any yet. But it's more like honey on the nose for me. Honey and toasty. My two favorite pet names. <laughs> 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 I love it when they call me toasty. That's what you call the Phillies, right? Yeah, that's what I call the Phillies, yeah. <laughs> Not the ones from Philadelphia, though. <laughs> uh, you well, know, I think we should dive in. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to taking into this because uh, I've been enjoying the progression. Yes. <clears throat> wow, okay. <clears throat> Oh. Okay. Um, I got like orange. Um, like a like a like a candy. Like not no. I want to say candy, but not candy. It's like a like an orange rind, or like right. a like a little more focused, like it's been dried. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. Oh, nice dry. It finishes dry. Good, nice long finish. I'm getting some 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 warm tingles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so it's definitely not drier. It reminds me more of bourbon. The finish on the end of it is more of it. The barrels are doing their job, folks. <laughs> uh, there's there's fun stuff going on with the barrels. On that first pass, I didn't get as much agave as I was hoping for, but but that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It really isn't. A little bit of toastiness, a little bit of nuttiness. Yeah. Um, it's dry like a, uh, I might even say there's a hint of tobacco in there. It doesn't lean toward chocolate. It leans more to maybe a bitter chocolate. Bitter chocolate, mm -hmm. tobacco, like on the back end of the palate. It's got to be from the char. Uh, yeah, I want to know. I want to know more about the barrels. <laughs> I mean, you know, I am because if you're an oakhead, this is not going to disappoint. If you're a Scotch drinker, this is not going to disappoint. Whiskey people might, yeah, might they might be passable. Bourbon, bourbon, yeah, uh, Scotch for sure. Wow, that's delightful. I love this progression. Is not what I thought it would be. Yeah, and that that combination of orange with the uh, with the vanilla or butterscotch—it's really delightful. 
And then you have that kind of toasty, nutty accent. Yeah. And then the the the, the tobacco, the bitter chocolate finish. This mm-hmm. this is so versatile. You can have it after dinner. I would pair it with a cigar for sure. And and a cigar with a full body too, because this one this one's got full body, full structure. Um a, a chocolate, you know, you could pair it with a yeah. with a sweet dessert. Go go sweet. Oh, sweet. it would make a gorgeous Manhattan too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had my first one. Yeah. <laughs> my first Latin Manhattan over Memorial Day. For, for those of you who are, who follow me on my Instagram, my personal Instagram, it's under Timber Elk. Um, we we uh, made a donation to that to the uh, Tequila Interchange uh, uh, project, which everybody should do. Um, look it up. It's uh, Mission Fifteen Thirty is there the official the Instagram of the of, of Tips one of the tips associates and um and they were they were uh, self um aging to uh, uh sembra bias from from uh, from sembra sul from david suro and using those as donation uh, uh pieces and so you would donate whatever you you could and they would send you a bottle and i got a 375 probably the last of the last two that were available i'm kind of late to that party so um, over Memorial Day, I took it over to my sister-in-law's, and she made me my first Latin Manhattan because she loves to, she loves making co- she makes the best martinis ever. She'd knock you on your butt. But anyway, so she made me my first Latin Manhattan. You can see that video on on my on my Instagram. And yes, I agree with you. This would make a great Latin Manhattan. I uh, totally agree. I, I'm sold. I'm not a cocktail guy. I'm a purist, okay? So I like having mine like this with a cigar, maybe with a dessert. A great tiramisu would be delicious with this mm-hmm. as well. Uh, it's versatile. It's not just for the oak heads. It really is. I'm I'm so sold. What's, the, what's our price point on this thing? Yeah, so again, from uh, Caskers, where they're directing you from the website, the uh, limited edition black label horse bottle is going for 89 and the uh, standard edition uh, in Yeho is going for 80. Worth every penny. This yeah. is this is just literally coming from um, a family of agaveros. Uh, generally it comes out of 1480. That's the, the, the distillery, which is Tequila Las Americas, which we've had several great grand tequilas mostly organic that come out of there this mm-hmm. one is not because uh, i guess they're working closely with a the the owner everardo gonzalez is a family member of the agaveros uh and their field is technically organic it's just not certified and so they're taking their organic agaves to process and to make tequila at 1480 and they've done a stellar job wow yeah and it's a it's a really great progression through the line as well yes uh i think it's don't be alarmed by the price if you're if you're price sensitive that's cool i'm good with that too but you know during this pandemic what drove the market is premium and super premium tequilas and by that i mean the price points okay they don't they don't technically denote quality all right (laughs) Everybody thinks that this is a sometimes you know, price is marketing. Yeah, right. Well, you know, even some brand owners that I talk to believe that premium means quality. It doesn't. In the liquor business, premium means price. It's a price. It's it's a pricing term. Okay. So, but what drove the market was that, you know, that price point. You know, from reposados to añejos to extra añejos, and and people were were used to paying more. I think that this is a worthy, don't blink twice. Get it, if you can find it, get it, have it delivered to you. You won't go wrong. And and like I told Rick, I, I, I've been telling everybody else uh, on every video, get yourself two. Get yourself one of these. And then when you're done, just when you're done with this, get a bottle of the regular stuff, save yourself a few bucks, and pour it back in here. It's like, it's the same juice. You know, and, and that way you have a nice display piece and it's always full and it's always the same juice. So, uh, you know, I hope they I hope they continue with this. I, I really do because, uh, you know, they're 
we're, we're seeing this year, we're seeing a lot more agave spirits. They're coming from everywhere because people are sick and tired of the same cookie cutter flavor profiles that you're getting from the mainstream brands or from those celebrity brands that, that are out there. Some, I have a list. If you haven't seen that list, go check out uh, my, my, uh, my medium account. And, or if you're, you know, if you're subscribed to the magazine, subscribe. My article on, on celebrity tequilas is in there. And, uh, I think the title goes celebrity tequilas are like assholes. <laughs> that's, the, that's the main title, but there's a list of celebrity tequilas that you can, you can gladly stand behind and for, you know, really reasonable prices. And there, yet there's, we love them before the celebrities even got involved. So go check out my list of celebrity tequilas there, but this, this is worth it. It's, it's just, there's no reason why you shouldn't have this on your library because it's not the cookie cutter mainstream tequila that that's out there for the general population, you know. Uh, so we're here to educate. That's what we're doing. Uh, what else do we know about this tequila besides coming out of uh, 1480? Uh, we know it's a uh, nominated for a brand of promise, right? Yes, <laughs> that's right. It is. You beat me to the punch. I need to get yeah. all the guys, and we need to get the music. Uh, did we say? Did we say how long it's in the barrel? It's eighteen months in the barrel. Uh, I think at the initially we said that. I would, but you're right. I'll go, I'm going to go on record, guys. You need to tell us what's going on with uh, who's the barrel where you're getting it. If are there virgin barrels? Are they used? You know, this one. This one reacts more of a like a scotch or a bourbon. Um, it's just. Exquisite nose, versatile. Yeah. And, you know, now that it has opened up, the nose is much bigger than it was on the initial pour. Yeah. The, the wood notes are just singing to me. This is really just, it's a beautiful tequila. I, I can't say enough about it. But, yeah, Brand of Promise nominee in the Añejo category. Will they come out with an extra Añejo? Who knows? We don't know. If you do, but, send it to us. Yes, please. <laughs> we'll be the first to know if they do. Uh, but that's our take on Cabal Tequila, Tequila Cabal. Uh, you've been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Fish and Auto Media on all of our channels and networks. Uh, I'm Mike Morales, again, here in the heartbeat of the San Gabriel Valley. That guy out there is... Rick Levy on the uh, other side of Camp Pendleton. <laughs> <laughs> the the non-military side. Uh, you've been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Please subscribe to us. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the notification bell. Give us a like. If you're listening to us on Spotify, download those, those uh, podcasts. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>